schedule a meeting of the Hartford City Council to order at this time. Fill up with the open with a word of prayer. Father, I thank you that you bless us. You bless us by allowing us to live in a free country, Father, but with that freedom comes responsibility. So, Father, as we've accepted the freedom to govern ourselves, we pray that uh, tonight that that responsibility falls heavily on us, Father, that we make the right decisions and and that would benefit the people of Hartford, Father. We just ask for your guidance. Thank you for watching over us. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right, we've got some visitors. We'll recognize you and allow you the time to address the Rob, I got you down later on. Okay. I'm just going to sit around with you. Okay. So, uh, my name is Paul Phelps, and uh, I'm resident here at Hartford. My wife, Debbie, is here also. We live at 218 Mulberry Street and have been for been there for the last 40 some odd years and uh, you know we try to keep our resident looking resident looking decent and I guess in a way we expect the city of Hartford to do the same thing and we feel like that they failed or failing to do that uh, I've kind of made a list of if you want to pass those down to everyone and I'll kind of go over those with, with you and there's some pictures also if you'll pass those around, I appreciate it. You kind of know some of the things I'm talking about. But again, I know we have a code enforcement guy. I'm not here to throw him on the bus or anything. I don't feel like he has the support from the city. I mean, if he goes up to knock on somebody's door and say, hey, you need to cut the weeds in your yard and see the weeds on Main Street are knee high, how can they, how can he enforce that? So, uh, let's see. And I know there was a, uh, he had an article where he's going to beautify downtown North Hartford back in March. I know he put the sidewalks in, but I said, well, you know, what's happened here? It's just like everything stopped. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about everybody else, but I'm tired of seeing the orange barrels on Main Street. And I'll go on down the list here on this sheet that I've passed out to everybody. I mean, there's a barricade in front of the hub house. And I, I'll go right about that every day going to my house. Mm -hmm. And have to dodge those barricades out there. And with the parking lot that's right next to it, there's very room for people, a car to drive through there. And I seen the city worker the other day, actually last week, and kind of questioned them about it and said, well, they know there's a water leak there, but they can't find it. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, you know, what are you waiting for, guys that are coming up to find it? If you're not going to look for it, patch it up and get rid of the barricades. Um, get the barricades beside the juries, what uh, Vikings uh, printing there. I mean, They've been out there for months. I know we finally did get the parking lot marked off here recently, which is good. And, you know, there's tall weeds going right along 69, right beside Watkins Plumbing. And all over Hartford, I mean, it's just weeds growing everywhere. Uh, one of them is the parking lot over here across the newspaper office on the corner of Washington and Main Street. I mean, they're like over an eight high there. I mean, stuff like that, I know you think it's nitpicking, but, you know, to me, you need to have a city that looks neat and attractive to the people come through here. And the new landscape to put down Watson Street, yeah, it looks great. I mean, but you got the moose grass growing all up in it. I've gone down there twice myself and sprayed down there because I just couldn't stand looking and seeing it being taken over. And we've, I've been doing a lot of walking like, lately, walking through town because some health issues come up and trying to get my walk in. And I guess I noticed some of this stuff. Now walking instead of driving through, and but I mean a lot of the sidewalks you go on down 231 toward where the old fridge was. I mean you kind of walk through the sidewalk. I mean they're just overtaken by grass on each side. You can barely got a walkway to run through there. And uh, you know I'd say it'd be kind of tough for a person if had to face handicap on a little electric scooter trying to get around and maneuver through there. It uh, can be a very uh, you know selfish thing. And uh, I know there's a lot of abandoned buildings. To me, it should be condemned. Or I don't know what the city has to go through to do that. But one of the old cleaners building down here, the roof falling in on it, here on Peach Alley. I mean, to me, the owner needs to be approached and say, hey, either tear it down, fix it up, 
or you know, we're going to condemn it. The old Dr. Blue House, what I call it, on the corner of McHenry in '69, it's been vacant, and sitting there for I don't know how many years. I mean, how many years? It's, it's right behind where I live at, so I know there's nothing going on down there, as far as nothing being done to it. And then, of course, the Farm Bureau building, which I know that I've heard that the county has bought that, which the roof is falling in on it. Right behind Main Street, or right behind the courthouse. And uh, to me, I mean, something needs to be pushed. So if the county's going to do it, why well, somebody get on the ball and push them to get it done? I mean, I think they've had plenty of time to do that. And I don't know what can be done with this trailer park on 69. I mean, you know. They had a shooting down there recently. You know, those trailers aren't fit to live in. I don't know what you got to do to condemn that. But look we'll like social services could be called in and do something about that. I mean, that's a pretty nasty place down there. And then another thing, too, as far as you got all the street signs, after the sidewalks are done, they're just laying on one side on Main Street in front of, I know, a set of signs in front of the newspaper office. And a stop sign out here on behind the courthouse there on Apple Alley on the center street across from the Farm Bureau is just laying on the ground. You know, some of these I've got pictures of whatever you can look at. And I don't know what's what's the what's your I guess I'm trying to finally get an answer here. What is your plan on the sidewalks of Main Street? I mean I've heard there's buildings there have water leaking in their basements now because of that. And and with all the weed that's growing up in the opening of the sidewalk, I mean, to me, it just doesn't look good. He might drive it too far. far as I so, I mean, a lot of these businesses have put a lot of time and money into their business, make it look good, and I just feel like they need some more support from the city to help it look decent downtown. And like I say, I just, me seeing it every day, I'm just tired of looking at it. And you got a lot of people coming in from the county to the library, to the community center, to the courthouse. You know, they need to have a decent town to come to to do that. And so look coming through town and all these weeds scattered everywhere. And businesses falling down. And barricades all up through the city. So, uh, you know, I'm just here to try to get some answers and see what you guys can tell me about that. Okay. And hopefully there's a plan that's going to get done soon to get this addressed and taken care of. Uh I'm going to start off by saying that we are short-handed. I've got one maintenance man who's been out for about a month. He's had rotator cuff surgery, and he'll be out for another uh, couple of months, I'd say, is what he's going through rehab right now, which makes us short-handed. Can you not far. hire part-time people to fill that spot to take care of Pardon? the time of work? Can you not hire part-time people to come in and fill that spot? I'd love to. I just don't have the funds right now to be able to to do that uh, as far as the barrels the barricades uh, the landscape uh, the landscape plots downtown uh, we've looked into planting those of course it hadn't been good planting season for that it's been hot and we'd have to water and everything and talking with uh, uh, the people at the garden centers they tell us that uh, even fall would not be a good time for us. It would be early spring. We put the barrels there to keep people from walking through there. Uh, it creates a trip hazard, you know, and people will walk through those things. And and so the barrels have been left there just to keep people out of them, basically. I'd say if you have landscape there, they're going to be walking through that too. I mean, if that's Pardon going to be me? a trip hazard. If you still have landscape there, it's still going to be a trip hazard then, wouldn't it? Well, there'll be trees and shrubs that people won't, you know, won't uh, probably go through as readily as it going around them and uh, we'll probably end up going ahead and putting mulch in there through the winter to try to hold down all the grass and and to try to protect the soil and uh, we'll probably end up putting some mulch in there that wasn't part of the plan but we've, we've talked about doing that. Uh, the water leak down in front of the uh, hub uh, you know, we've tried, we've got a leak detection system. It hasn't shown up for us like we need for it to. Uh, they have looked at it. It, it is a, a good size leak, and if we black top over, we just have to tear it back up again once we have somebody that's available to, to look at for the water leak. Uh, the weeds on Union Street, I do know that that, that grass needs trimming. Uh, 
both sides of Union Street going down 69. I do know that's uh, the weeds growing up in the sidewalk. Um, you know, we'll we'll have to spray those. You know, well, they but, need to be weeded and go back and spray. Yeah. You know, the spray to be the weeds standing there. Uh, the uneven joints. We've had a crew in here to work on the uh, the opposite side of Main Street and coming up Center Street to try to take out a lot of those trip hazards there. Um, the others I'm not not aware of where they are, but we'll look for those. Uh, I've sprayed down there on the, on the boulevard area. I've sprayed myself and Rings Evans sprayed so. It's just a matter of gaining control of it, you know, doing it periodically. Uh, the edging, we've not noticed that. I'm, I'm thankful that you've called that to our attention. Um, I mean, it's just barely past one person to yeah. walk through. Uh, to on this side but it's right. like I said, you know, I'm short-handed right now, but uh, I've got three of them that uh, on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, they're all, their dates are taken up with the garbage collection, so they're only available to on Mondays and Tuesdays. Well, if it, uh, if something else. Yeah. I mean, I've been doing a lot of walking since like late May, early June, and then all this stuff been like that since then. Mm -hmm. That I that I've got noted there. Yeah. So it's not like it's just happening. Like well, it's you know, it's one of those things that uh, maintenance people probably wouldn't notice it. Uh, you know, with other projects that they've had, uh, we've had a project to put in a tile out here at Park Lane and Emory Woods Drive had that request for six months and we're just now able to get around to putting it in so uh, unfortunately he broke a water line when he's putting it in so that's another half day that somebody's got to take off from whatever they're supposed to be doing to repair that you know it's about three or four person job I do know the abandoned buildings uh, we do have uh, uh, intention of Cleaning up these or taking care of the abandoned buildings, oftentimes it's hard to find uh, who's responsible for those buildings. Uh, uh, if they're heirs to an estate, for example, they could be scattered throughout states, and that's what creates the difficulty for us. Uh, we're aware of, I mean, there's a couple up on Church Street, the, the Blue House that you're talking about. I mean, I know there's many more. I just live on this side of the street. Yeah. So I just kind of concentrate here. I know there's many others. You know, other parts of town, same situation. Yeah. But are they are they working on trying trying to do this? Yes, uh, we've got uh, it's a, just a long legal process that we have to go through in order to try to condemn them. I mean, we have to put liens on the properties and uh, that has to be filed, and it's just a long legal process that we have to go. To, uh, we can't just go in and say, okay, we're taking this over, and, you know, and. Uh, that would be kind of uh, a socialist move, you know, to, <laughs> to do something like that. The trailer park down on 69, um, I agree that it's an eyesore, that it's troublesome. Um, some of those trailers are owned by the occupants, some of them are owned by Scott Lewis, and trying to get him to do something about it. You know, is I'd be embarrassed to say I own him. Pardon? I'd be embarrassed to say that I own him. Well, um, I, I don't know what his thinking is there, but uh, it does need it does need to be closed or new trailers brought in. You know, there's a law that says once the trailer is moved out, yeah. there has to be a survey. Right. Okay. Right. Um, the center street flooding. Um, I know they try to clean up great now. Maybe last week, but we had a friend of the day. I mean, it's that's something going on for years. Yeah. And I don't know what's the idea or what's the cure. Well, sometimes, you know, when uh, well, a little bit of trash, would, you know, that people leave on the street, wash it down to it, uh, leaves especially, people let their drains, their culverts get clogged up with leaves, yeah. especially in the I think they put on the river. You know, maintenance schedules go out and check them every two, three weeks. We do well to keep what grass mold we can, you know. Uh, I mean, I know. I mean, that's just kind of part of it. I know. Well, right. How we feel, too, though, is we pay taxes. 
I know. Yeah, we pay taxes on practically everything. Insurance, we pay as far as more taxes here than anybody else in the county does as far as the city of Franklin. We understand people are strapped as far as for money. But still, some of these things have got to get done. All right. And it's not like uh, we don't have work orders, uh, you know, have a list of work orders for maintenance to do right now. It's just... Uh, well, you see your city workers sitting over here in the police department or somewhere else. That's not on the clock. Right. That's not working. And that's very upsetting. Of course, sometimes, sometimes they start at 6 o'clock in the morning and by 3 o'clock they're through with their day, too, you know. Uh, I don't know what to tell you there. It's just uh, the timing of when they're clocking in and working. You, know. you might want to consider the district court as far as for juveniles or for people as far as it needs to do time as far as that you may be able to get someone. Yes, I know they're going to have to have supervision, but you still may want to get some as far as to do some of this routine maintenance work that someone else can get to. All right. Right now, the atmosphere for us using outside help is not too great, especially after we've had the inmate pass away out there on the street, and that court case is, been, is coming up. And that kind of makes everybody a little cautious about utilizing people outside of hired individuals. Um, the street signs, they're scheduled to be put back up. They're going to be placed in the flower beds. It's just a matter of um, They've been out there for several times. The one by Farm Bureau has no flower bed beside it. It's I come down that street. It's every actually day. a stop sign. Look to me, it needs to be. Yeah. Okay, the one over here. Yeah, I know. I've seen it down. I don't know why we haven't addressed it. Um, the basement's leaking. We think we've got those uh, that remedied. Uh, we. The last few rains hadn't shown any sign of leaking in the basement. We had a terrible problem when uh, construction was first going on, and not sure where the water was coming from. Whether we thought it was from the landscape boxes, or if it was just coming down the side of the buildings where it wasn't caulked properly, or what it was. Uh, there were some other issues that that uh, were determined to cause some water to come in that weren't part of the construction, and so. Uh, Right now, they've been dry, and so that's one of the things that we've been waiting for in order to uh, address those landscape boxes to make sure we didn't have to dig those out and seal them over with brick or something, you know, change the plans there. Um, I know the businesses deserve better, like next to Jerry's building. Uh, somebody's already backed into his building. And that's one reason we put the barricades up there temporarily until we can get some post put up and we're looking at uh, we've already contacted the person about putting in post and welding rails making it more or less like a fence and barricade to help protect his building but it's it was open it was vulnerable and that's one reason those barricades were put there to just try to well, keep well, they've been up there for some time I know. Jerry can probably tell you how long. Yeah, yeah, they've been there. So I don't know what you call temporary. Should have been there a little bit earlier, too, because they, they hit it before they put them yeah. there. Yeah. So, I mean, temporary, I mean, I understand temporary. To me, I call that a few weeks to not months and months. Yeah. The only thing I can say is we do the best we can with what jobs we've got before us. So, uh, it's just things that come up like the water leak. That kept them busy for half a day and kept them from being able to do something different. Once, once, uh, yeah. once the other fellow comes back to work and we get back to a full force, that'll give us, we only have two maintenance people that are working full time all week. The other three are garbage on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, so they're only temporary. A lot of times they have to do mowing on Mondays and Tuesdays, so it's just a matter of getting scheduled and going through the work orders. And, uh, you know, it's, I appreciate your list. Uh, you know, this is something that I can give to the maintenance supervisor and just calls attention to them like the stop sign over by the Baptist building. But again, uh, I mean, I'm not trying to be hard about this, but that's I'm not certain. I mean, we still get stuff every day. Right. It's not like it's from the north. Yeah. And you just get tired of looking at it. Yeah, I'm saying. It's embarrassing for downtown to me that the barricades there, the orange barrels, this long. Well, to me, something should have already been done about it. 
Uh, once we get the mulch in there in those landscapes, then we'll take the barrels out and all the Yeah, I'm not trying to be negative about this, but, okay. but you know, you come up put landscape in there, who's going to take care of it? Well, that's it. We're trying to find something that's uh, low maintenance, you know, to put in there. That, that I can see, see weeds growing up in that too. I'm not, again, I'm not trying to keep being a dead horse here, but it's just what I've seen. Well, we'll just, we'll just wait for uh, citizens to come and remind us that, you know, this is something that needs to be done. Or maybe they'll do it for us. Huh? Maybe they'll do it for us. Well, he said he's sprayed, so. Yeah, I have been going to spray him. On this right here, George, down there by old Tishner's, that ditch line. Uh, Shouldn't that be the property owner's responsibility to keep that clean? Oh, that yeah, clean that's, not, that's, not, uh, that's not city property there, that, that ditch right there where it has those but trees. To me, they need to be approached and say, hey, you need to cut this down. Another all one. beside it too though it goes on up to the building it's not just the ditch I know but it it's is. all that side of the building I know another one that have a picture of the one behind that beside Bennett Chiropractor behind that convenience store it's the same way and this one here, I feel like that should be the property owner to take care of that the county could do that one too uh, so right here where they park the sheriff's cars oh yeah and so yeah, that's the like where the sheriff's yeah. cars are parked. That's private property. It's well, not city. Private property. I know. I mean, we can we can tell them to take care of it. Uh, they're just renting that, you know, from the Anderson. So let's take a look at him to I mean, uh, the Anderson uh, Andy has uh, has some other property that you know, needs some attention, I'm sure, because it did last summer, yeah. right down here beside Rocks, right. Roxanne. Yeah, I know it's another one, too. I've been volunteering my time with the city, working, mowing, and weed eating for them. So i done it for four years by myself. Good. When they was working and stuff, and we tried to keep it downtown looking good yeah. and everything. So, I mean, good. we understand that's what's going on. And, but I get up, I got up this morning at 6 o'clock and went out and mowed because some people was complaining about coming down Oakwood Drive, had loot, and we're going to try to get them banked. So yesterday I was with the maintenance before he went to school, and he said he's going to get these signs set up. We went all over town, and we're going to get the signs set up next yeah, week. Good. So yeah. we do. we're going to get on it. <laughs> okay. all right, well, I've been helping them with okay. and I don't get paid. This is my well, volunteer I think time. <laughs> Yes, sir. but anyway, thanks for your time. And well, I appreciate your interest and address. your willingness to come before us and bring this list. And and like I said, we will address everything here and try to as soon as we can. Okay. That's the that's okay. thing. Thanks, sir. I agree with you 100%. I'm sorry? I, I agree with you 100%. Okay. I've been on George myself. <laughs> we all have. <laughs> okay. All right, we're good. Keep going. Thank you. All right. So, so. I don't want to be the only sore head. No, that's all right. That's what makes I I've got the shirts. <laughs> all right, do it. I may get one. Just Here's your pictures. Keep on giving them to your maintenance guy. Okay. I put them on George's office. There you go. <laughs> Frame them. Yeah. Yeah, do that. Okay, yeah. thank you. Oh, thank you for coming. <coughs> all right. Charlene, have you got something for us? Well, the first thing I wanted to do was I wanted to thank all of the city and everything for the response to our store opening and all. And um, we appreciate the efforts that you and the maintenance guys have put into the city. And and we just want to say thank you. That you know we know there are some areas that need some work, but. We appreciate all that you guys have done and getting it straight down Center Street and on 231. Your 15 minute parking sign is supposed to go up. He's got that on the list to do, and there's one down in front of the bakery that's going up too. So those are on the list. Uh, pretty pretty soon. Okay, but we, we do, I wanted to tell you that we, we really appreciate that, and we appreciate, you know. The trash can being put over on our side of the street, we're, we're very thankful for that. Um, we also want to say thank you for picking up our garbage because we have so much garbage. And so we wanted to say we appreciate that too. In fact, 
we would like to get a list of your city workers and employees and um, September the 3rd we would like to offer everyone as a city employee a 10% discount at sore heads for anything that they would like. Okay, thank for you. That I day. appreciate that. Um, the only other thing that <clears throat> I wanted to ask you about was when we walk across, like we park way back there um, behind even the lot right. that was King Drugs. When we're walking across that lot, there's, I don't know what it is, there's something that drips across that parking lot and we're slipping and someone has even fallen mm. from that. And we're... There again, that's, that's private property. And you'll have to talk to them about what the problem is there because we're not allowed, the city can't go on private property. Well, I know where it's coming from because I can see it coming out the building, but... Oh. Yeah. Is it a health issue? Well, it is. If, I mean, as or is it just as it can be. condensation coming off the air conditioner? Oh, no, it's not condensation. Okay. I mean, it's a running trickle. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Junior All ordinance through. officer take care of something like it? Do what? The ordinance officer take care of something like it? The ordinance. Code enforcement. Code enforcement. Code enforcement. Code enforcement. Yeah. Oh. Uh, that's I don't know if that comes thing under. That's worrying us is because it's. You know, it, yeah. it's slippery as it can be. Yeah. And so that's that's one thing that I wanted to ask you about. Okay. I and, would, if I were you, I'd just, is it King's? Is that what it is? That's or not where it's hospital? coming from. Is what? That's not where it's coming from. Oh. Of course, I mean. It's coming from the Capers building. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay. I would just, uh, I would. If I were you, I would just tell Dave, you know, that there's a lawsuit possibility out there that, and Mr. Whittinghill needs to know too, so that, because he's going to be held responsible the same as Dave would be to let him know that there's a possibility of a lawsuit because of, it may be that um, it's a grease trap or something like that that's creating a problem. And they, I know we had a problem with their basement. Mm -hmm. That, well, this uh, is coming out of a gutter. Yeah, I'd say <laughs> I'd say that they need to know about that the possibility of a lawsuit exists. You know that. Um, okay. <laughs> well, didn't right. the city test that water to see what it was? Uh, they tested down in the basement. Well, we actually scoped it out with the camera, and our drain is clean and clear. And I think what it is is they've got a grease trap that they don't attend to regularly, and um, it's, it was overflowing and clogging up their line before it got to our line. And so this may be some of that problem there. Wouldn't that be health department? Call the health department. Should be. It is for a restaurant. Mm -hmm. I've dealt with it. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think it looked like if it's, uh, business is having problems with it, it should be, even though it's private property, city ought to have some say. Well, we don't have jurisdiction over it. It'd be the health department or somebody like that that would have that right to go in. And they, I mean, they, they check all those eating establishments on a regular basis right. and give them a rating, and, and surely they're not overlooking things like that. But but. Okay, and here's the only other thing, and this one I'm probably going to get smacked on, and I'll probably be the first one to get a ticket or something, but, all right, I'm just going to tell you, I don't even know what a Hartford City police vehicle looks like. Okay. I never, ever see right. our Hartford City police. Right. And I'm like Debbie and Paul here, I, you know, I pay my taxes too, and I would like to see a presence once in a while of our police force. I mean, we're buying them new cars. We, I think, even hired another officer. And the only place I see them, and I, I know they're out somewhere else, I know it's just probably me, but I see them sitting on the dang bench over there. Mm -hmm. 
and that's the only place I see them unless they're eating somewhere. Mm -hmm. Okay? I, I'm just being as honest as I can be. I understand. Okay? I'm trying not to be too ugly, but I'm just, <laughs> I, I'm being as honest as I can be. And if we said we want two-hour parking, they need to be patrolling that. I don't care. I, I, know. I know that you're their boss. You pay their salary. Tell them to get out there and do their dang job. I mean, I'm just, that's, that's your all's, the whole council, that's your it all's is. business yeah. to tell them to do their job. When people call because somebody's in their building and they say, well, they have squatter's rights. Well, heck, no, they don't have squatter's rights. Somebody ought to go up there and say, you're not allowed in here. Right. I mean, they need to get off their big butts and move like the rest of us. I'm just putting it bluntly here, I okay? I understand. I, I, the but problem. I see, I see the sheriff's vehicles all over. Yeah. Okay? I see state troopers. I never see Hartford police. I mean... I, I'm just being as blunt as I can be. Sure, I understand. I know what you're saying. Um, I'm not trying to make excuses for them. You know, they do need to be out on patrol. They do, they do go out on patrol. They come back. And I mean, in the paper, you read Beaver Dam. They're they're getting money in all the time. They're writing tickets for people not wearing seatbelts. They're writing tickets yeah. for people speeding through downtown. They're writing pe people up for hitting other vehicles. My son got hit by a vehicle out here the other day crossing the sidewalk and the vehicle went on off. Didn't even stop to ask if he was all right. Yeah. Nobody was there. Did he report it to the police or? Well, no. Well. I, I probably should have reported to the sheriff's department, but no. He was all right, but I'm, I'm just saying they need to be a presence in our community. Right. Because right now, I'll just tell you, the people that talk to me, they just laugh about them. I, I, they do, guys. I, I personally, I'm a member of the county. I don't even know who's on the police force, other than Leroy. And I've been sure I guess that half the people in this town don't know Leroy's name. I mean, I'm, I'm trying not to be too ugly, but I'm just saying, if we're paying taxes and we're paying these men, they need to be doing their job. Mm -hmm. I'll pass it along to them. And, uh, and I'm sure that I'll hear about it, but that's just the way it is. Yeah. You know, the parking issue, we know every town's got parking problems, and uh, you saw in the paper where Olinsborough's trying to determine how they can enforce their two-hour parking. They've got the same dilemma that we do. Uh, since the chalking was done away with of, of the tires, uh, well, trying to... Well, all of them to, have a cell phone. Just well... Give me a picture. Go back two hours later, if that same vehicle's there, ticket. I'm... I'm just offering a solution the way I see it. Okay. I, but I'm I'm not so much even talking about parking tickets as much as just they the need presence. to be a presence. Yeah. I mean, there's no fear at, at all from anyone. One of my employees almost got hit the other day because she was turning in Center Street and somebody was coming out. It's a one-way street. Right. No one should be coming out there. There's not even a light for them to turn that way. We have, uh, just usually have one on duty and of course they can't be all places at all times. So, you know, there's a lot of But people. if they would just be someplace I sometime. I agree. Yeah. Um, that, that's just, that, that's just me and my opinion. Guys, okay. but I, for for what it's worth, we owe it to the citizens of Hartford to have the police at least have a presence. You know what I'm saying? Sure. When we've got state troopers out here in the middle of our town, and they're pulling out and writing tickets, and our guys, we don't even see a car. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
that that just kind of defeats the purpose of having city police. Uh, I'm thinking, why even waste our money? Why not jump, not do away with it and just use the sheriff and the state troopers? That's a tempting thought. <laughs> I save on some salary and some retirement and <laughs> Well, I mean, I, and, I, and I know that's just, that's not a solution, but right. I'm, you see what I'm saying. That's just. I know what you're saying. The frustration level is not reached its peak yet, but it's getting close. So I understand what you're doing, Shirley. I, I know. So anyway, guys, that's, that's what it's for. But yeah, Lisa, we really do want to uh, support the city workers and that's and that's the day we thought would be good it'd be right after labor day and everything and if you wouldn't care to give me a list we would we'd like to help you know support the city because like i said you guys have been great for us and we appreciate that thank you i get you a list i checked your basement the, this afternoon and it looks like it's still staying dry under sore heads so we're we're working on it the only place we were concerned about was you know right up front there yeah but then when i went up there it looked like it was dry after the rains we've had for the last couple of days right. so so right now we're crossing our fingers and saying yay yeah that's one of the things that we has prolonged the process downtown uh, just seeing what we can use those planter boxes as they were intended or if we're going to have to clean them out and brick them over like the rest of the street in between so it, as long as it doesn't appear to be causing any problem i think we'll go ahead and plan on using them as planter boxes if not then we'll have to concrete them in or something you know if it can still cause any problems to you and mary i'm like I mean, I don't even know who's on the police force, but that's, but I'm just saying it would be nice to be able to see them and know who's on there. You yeah, know what, yeah, what exactly. I mean? That at least if I saw somebody I could recognize, oh, you're one of our policemen, mm -hmm. but, you know. I hear you. <laughs> so, I know, we're not... We're not Mayberry, but you know, we're kind of close. We're too close, as a matter of fact. So, anyway, I've said my piece. Sorry, guys. Thank That's you. All right. Thank you. Appreciate you coming by. Thank you. I'd like to add uh, the two hour parking signs. I've moved, I built my office there in 85. And they've been on there then, and then the city even replaced them not long ago, put new ones up. And, there's never been a two-hour parking thing that had been enforced. And I said, why waste your money on signs if you're not going to do it? <coughs> <coughs> Oakwood Drive. <coughs> it was 20 mile an hour the whole Oakwood Drive. <coughs> and they made from Arn Mountain down 20 mile an hour speed limit, and the rest of it left at 35. 65. <laughs> and, there is, uh, I bet there's not one in ten that goes 20 mile an hour down that street. I don't know that. I did the other day. <coughs> a lady in a wheelchair passed me. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's well, not very good. I was at 231 coming through Hart. I called day. Brent, the our city police, when the school started because I was picking up my grandson. The guy, I know he was running 55, and he almost towed him back in out of my car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I called Brent and told him, you, you need to come on down here. Some, we're going to have a bad wreck. <clears throat> then another issue down there on Oakwood Drive, they park in, almost in the street when the people come down through there, and you can't see around them. <laughs> and they flying down through there. So they, they help him coming down there setting some. When they ain't busy, the city help police. Even school buses are speeding down to there. Yeah, need to be slowed down. Well, if you look at half the signs on the streets, you may see what the speed limit is at one end, but there may not be one at the other end. Well, that's Carlisle's that way. Oakwood's pretty well marked. Right. 
And I don't know why, they, mostly old people live along there where I live. There's no very few kids there. But from Arn Mountain on out, there's several kids up to there, little kids. Right. And they put that back to 35 because I think people in Arn Mountain complained it'd take them too long to get out. And I don't know that. Hey, that is my to the speed limit anyway, whether it was 35 or 20. They, yeah, they, they don't. Like David yeah. said, they're, they're, it's 55 through there. I was at our church the other evening, and I was sitting up there at Walnut, waiting to get across the street, and I think it was the twin of the guy that drove 100 miles an hour. It was a pickup truck that looked like fenders might fly off at any moment. Mm. I bet you he's sitting 75 going right through town. Mm. And I thought, now where are our police? Well, lo and behold, one of them was parked somewhere. <laughs> I wanted to stop so bad, but like I said, I don't know them. No, the I mean, I know who Leroy, like Leroy see, is, but I don't know them. I'd like to see the, uh, a more routine presence at the school. I would, yeah. Uh, I would. During yeah. When the speed limits flashing. Right. Because I go through there just to see if somebody's mm -hmm. down there. <laughs> Anymore, I go, yeah. and, and I know there was a fellow asleep down there at the old yeah. recycling There's place. There's people trying to pull out from the school the other day. out there. Who was driving? And people that's coming either north or south, east or whatever that goes through there. Uh, yeah. They'll see you getting ready to pull out and they'll speed up. That's right. And I'm like, what are you doing? It's 35 through here. Okay, but we're like, moving right along. Let's, oh, go, come on, let's yeah. Yeah. approach our minutes and take a look at the minutes. And uh, I'll entertain a motion when you get finished about uh, accepting one of those minutes. <laughs> Make a motion to accept the minutes. Okay, second. Uh, second. Any discussion? All in favor, up your hand. Thank you. Uh, Tara's not here. She's away at training. So we'll look at the bank balance statements, income statements, and the accounts payable. And see if you have any questions about any one of those. The question I had was the, are we still receiving the grant money um, that's hitting the water account, or is that over, is it a timing difference as to when it goes Which in? One? In the water? Yeah. I think it was in the water. Yes. 200000 From on, uh, you looked at. This is what we had last year, and then, yeah. so I'm wondering, are we still receiving that, or is that yeah, done? The project's complete. Okay. And done. So naturally they would have to deduct that out of that amount if you were trying to compare your yep. current to the prior. Okay. And you'll have the same thing comparative on uh, sidewalk because we were receiving the sidewalk grant money this time, but mm -hmm. we didn't have any last year. $270 on bank charge. Um, again, that part of that is anytime there's a return check, the city is charged, and then we pass it on. We pass them on. So bank charges are related to bank checks. People that pay fire departments for their fire dues and their check balance. People that pay more bill and check. Do we collect that back? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we can charge fifty dollars for every return check.
Any other questions? What is meant by sinking fun? Sinking fun. Uh, I like it. Uh, for OTF. Water and sewer, I guess, is what it is. It's WNS. Yeah. That's actually, those are funds that um, every month I put around 17000 uh, in those accounts, and that is going back from as early as 1991 projects that we received a grant fund, but we also received a, like a KIA loan, Kentucky Infrastructure, for water projects. Some of those we'll be paying on for over 50 years, 50 years plus. And the same, same thing like right now, if you all made, if you all accepted a grant, it would go out another 50 years. And so I put money into those accounts and every six months the state pulls the money out of those accounts to pay on all of those bond series, like I said, from back from the, as far back as 1991. Okay, I just didn't know what it meant by sinking funds, so they, my bank account's a sinking fund. <laughs> And you it, know it, it never ends. <laughs> well, you also notice on your bank on your bank statement, the very last line now says short-lived assets. The, uh, the, the auditors told us what to name that account, and it had to be named that. They tell us we have to put $750 a month in that account, and again, it's in lieu for bond payment. Um, so the city doesn't really make the names of those accounts. They tell us what those have to be. I've seen this one on here, Save the Theater, and it's... Save the Theater was an account that was created whenever this here was renovated. Um, they kept, we've kept the account open for purposes now of whenever we have a festival or something like that. The only funds that come into that account would be where we've had, um, we sold t-shirts during the festival or stuff like that. The money goes out of that account for the exact same thing if we're buying trophies for the beauty pageant mm -hmm. something. So that count pretty much stays right at about the same balance. Yeah, I know every, every week or month I yeah. see it doesn't look like it's changed much. Yeah, no, we don't. And unless, uh, like I said, unless we have some type of uh, citywide again. More do we owe on the fire department building? <laughs> Getting closer. Yeah. It's getting closer. What was it? 360 payments that we had to make? Mm -hmm. I can get you an exact. I just wanted to have a mark it on the I don't know. That would have been 10 years. And, uh, I don't know. 30 years. Yeah. Well, yeah. statements, income statements, and accounts payable. I'll make a motion. All right. Second. Second. All right. Any discussion? All in favor of the hand. Thank you. Motion carried. We now open the floor for old business and it will be the second reading of the ordinance designating Earl Russell Court. So somebody will read the introduction to that one for us, please. An ordinance accepting the dedication of Earl Russell Court and declaring it a public street in the city of Hartford. Okay, second reading. Uh, entertain a motion to adopt this ordinance. I make a motion. All right, second. Second by Tony. Now, is there any discussion to this ordinance? If not, then if you're in favor of adopting the ordinance, up your hand. Thank you. Unanimous. All right. <clears throat> um, 
New business, under new business, close the citizen's bank account. Do you want to explain that 50 cent account? Yeah, we opened an account for the project that, Kate, that Kenny would just mention for the last water project that we did. Uh, the mayor at that time asked that we open the account uh, at Citizens Bank. Well, over a million dollars ran through that account. Um, that project is done. There's really no need to keep that account. Um, it's what we normally had done in the past was our bank accounts were at Commonwealth Community and when the city needed to borrow funds, they bought they borrowed the money from citizens, so that way we were patrons of both of our city banks. Um, the disadvantage is because when you're moving money electronically from account to account, you can't cross the street there from one bank to the other. So, and that account has served its purpose. There's no need to keep that account open. I'm not allowed to close an account without the council's permission, and it'll have to be the minutes, and then the bank will allow me to close it. But before, um, before long, what they're going to do, they're just going to start charging us to have, because there's no activity in that account. Right now, it holds 50 cents, um, and that was how we even got that project. So I just would like to close it, because it serves, serves no further purpose. So I entertain a motion to close citizens bank account. I'll make a motion. Okay, thank I'll you. Second. Any discussion regarding that? All right, all in favor, uplifted hand. Thank you. I uh, have a few extra items here to bring up. Robbie's here today. Uh, you know, we have declared that 20 feet of property next to him uh, as surplus property. Uh, it has been appraised. It was appraised for $1,000. We're allowed to sell it to an individual for the appraised value. So I am asking for a motion that uh, council agree to sell that 20-foot strip of property, the depth of the property, to Robbie for $1,000. I make a motion we sell. All right. Take a second down this end. Anybody? <laughs> Either one of them. <laughs> Any discussion regarding that? I think we ought to charge him 500 just for good measure. We retain full use of it. We yeah. Need to yeah. <laughs> okay, if there's, uh, there's no discussion, then all in favor of selling that for 1000 All right, thank you. So, Robbie, you. Hey, if, if you don't care, I got another song to say, too. I want to disagree with the other two people you've had talk in here. I think you're doing a fine job. I've been here, and I know what you've got to work with. I think you ought to got a, a big note for, for you know, you, you used to work for the city. Yes, sir. And now you work for the city, you just don't get paid. And I don't know if you all draw any salary or not. I've done it both ways. But if you do, it's not enough. And... Yeah, if you want the mayor. Okay. If you want more police presence, maybe you shouldn't have bought an unmarked car. But I see them plenty. Yeah. And I and I think they're doing a good job. Now I I like some of the other ones you had, the new ones I I haven't haven't seen them all, but you know, I know you're working without the help you need. I'm old and, and I'm just trying to get where I walk without making sound effects. <laughs> but if I can help in any way. You're getting older, you know, that's not Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, that's where we got a lot of help before. Yeah. We got it from organizations like the JCs. Yeah. We got it from, you know, like Lions Club. And, and you know, uh, a lot of that stuff was done, like, you know, planting flowers. We, we went to one of the discoveries in Owensboro and bought whiskey barrels, $3 a piece. Brought them back. Actually, we turned them up on the end and put a barrel under them. But anyway, we ended up cutting them in half and putting flowers out on them, you know. And the city. That it didn't cost the city a fine, and that's that's what you need. People not complain. Yeah. People can help. Right. And our, you know, list, our list of volunteers is pretty short. You know. That. 
people pay their taxes. Yeah. But sure. we ought to be glad this guy didn't cross Main Street and go on this side of town. Look yeah, this exactly. I, I thought the same thing for here. Take the other side of town. He, he won't know. get through his walk. <laughs> <laughs> but shouldn't our code enforcement officer be here at the meetings and say what he's done, what he's well, going to do? Well, we can have, have to remember, he's just part-time. He just works 20 hours a month is all he works. Sure. And uh, including that is sending out notices and... He drives around, but you know, he drives around. Just he can't get every street in town, so yeah. he, you know, he takes turns about the streets and things like that. I'm not going to make excuses for him, but he does. He does issue citations. He does uh, pursue if they don't clean things up. You know, uh, it's just like a parallel practice street. You know, it looks a lot better now. It's not yeah. perfect. She's, she's got a mound or two out in the backyard that's covered over with plastic, but at least it's Clean. away from It's in the backyard. It's not out. I would like to see him. Walk. They need to get the carpet yeah, out, too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, didn't they, You know, we've got a few empty houses. houses. <laughs> yeah, carpet's up. <laughs> they look to me like they're, they're, they be livable. Uh, we've got one out in Iron Mountain, a nice house that they won't even mow. And as soon as I get everything that runs, I'm gonna go over and mow their yard. It's, it's been mowed, though. Huh? It's been mowed. It's been sold. Has it? Okay. The owners are there. Well, I mean, if if you know, if they're gonna come to me and say I need help. Yeah, that was foreclosure. The owners were actually in Arizona or Arkansas, yeah. and it was foreclosed, and that's why that went on that long. Of course, what I'll do is I'll tell my wife she'll go. She, she won't let me mow. Uh, when she had her hip replaced, she'd sit inside the front window at the house and watch me mow and cry. So I let her mow. It. <laughs> yeah. Anything like that that, that you know that, that there's any help needed on. You know we're old, but we can still do a little bit. What about that house across from Billy Wood there? Uh, finding, to, finding the air there has been a big drawback for us. We've got to lean on the property, you know, for the mowing and things like that that we do. It would be a good place for the fire department to practice it. <laughs> That's not against the law anymore. Yeah. You know, yeah. we can't do that anymore. We ain't got no cop there anyway. And <laughs> <laughs> hey, they did clean up Griffin Street. I guess they almost bought that house. Oh, the... Uh, of, uh, oh, it's high. It looks good. Buds don't play. Yes, it looks really good. Oh, I went to this place. It looks well, really good. I'm going to get out of here. Okay. Yeah. Say, Just right. Y'all don't get praised very much, and I, and, and I appreciate everything you do. Thank you. Check with Tara, of course. Check with Tara the first part of the week about. Okay. Well, now day. Tara said see her Friday. Friday? Yes. Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> Just make the check out to no, me. You won't I didn't know if she was going to be back or not. She's for the city. She's in Lexington on Friday. Okay. Okay. Well, what, yeah, what we'll do is because I've got the, all the stuff that I need to yeah. go run through the planning and zoning lady. So, yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. Y'all have a good day. All right. You too. Bye-bye. These Robbie. foreclosed properties, sometimes it's hard to find who's even foreclosed on because the, when I moved to Hopewood, the house beside me that Matt's living in now, it had been, uh, no one's lived in it, but he lived for it. had a lot of mold and stuff in it. And uh, I mowed the yard several times because it was getting up knee high. You know, it got any higher, you couldn't even do nothing to it. And uh, then they sold it to Courthouse Doors, and I bought it. Three months later, they still couldn't produce a deed. So I had to tell them I want my money back. So sometimes that's a big problem on how empty houses. There's a lot of legal issues that people don't understand, I think, you know, <laughs> trying to foreclose on properties. Well, the sad issues. thing is the people that we know that live here in town that won't take care of it. Yeah. Those are the ones you ought to go after. The house down for me, I noticed the yard from over the head for the first time this year. Did the city do that? Which one? Melton's house? Uh, 
down there on the corner? Or? No, not on the corner, but uh, it's a uh, oh. no, going right beside the yeah. upholstery shop. Oh, oh yeah, I don't. Yeah, I seen about yeah. somebody out there mowing one day. I just noticed it was molded. It hadn't been mowed this whole year. Yeah, and he he's uh, taking vacation in some penitentiary, I think. Okay. Well, so we have to. Field Eddie Albanone. It ain't been mowed before. Okay. It's a. I thought it'd been mowed once. Maybe, but it's. This it place is over your head. That old trailer is sitting up there at Green. Yeah, he keeps telling me it's going to tear it down, tear it apart. You know that thing full of rats and mice and everything else. Moving right along, do uh, you have a list that I have to give to you? Uh, this is the surplus property that we've already voted to get rid of. No, I don't. Uh, you see the Police car first. I have to tell you what the, what was intended use, uh, reason why we're getting rid of it, and how we're getting rid of it. So we're going to take sealed bids on it. The computers. Uh, there's one computer. No, we'll take sealed bids on all of these computers and server there. Now you see the fire department tanker truck. Um, Billy Henderson came to me about a week ago and said they had problems. The tanker truck is the second truck that they take out. The first one, of course, is the engine. This tanker truck just carries extra water so they don't have to go look for a hydrant or they use this to, right. to extend their firefighting capabilities. It holds about 35 pound gallons. It's a 91 model. So it's 28 years old. It, the tank on it is a stainless steel 3,500 gallon tank. It's been repaired. The tank's been repaired several times. But the truck chassis, the cross members are, and the frame are both badly rusted. And bad, so bad that it's, uh, we've had to, uh, take it off the road. Uh, we can't stand the liability of, of the vehicle being as dangerous as it is. So we've already got an interested individual who would like to buy the truck to put on a farm. And so I don't have it appraised yet, but once we get it appraised, we'll do like we did to Robbie's property. Once we know what the appraisal value is on it, We'll offer to them for that price. And Are we going to have to buy a new tanker truck? We can buy a new tanker truck. They're over two hundred fifty thousand dollars. What we'll have to do is, like just like this one, we'll have to find a truck that's a used truck, um, and hopefully get it for under a hundred thousand. Good gracious. Yeah. The tank on it, is it going to keep that or sell it to No, it's, that's one reason that the farmer wanted was so that he could haul water. What would we have to pay for a tank like that so if it's usable? Well, it's not, it's not that great. It's been repaired multiple times. I mean, they've had somebody go down inside the tank and repair it on the inside even. Um, It's, it's life is not much longer than the chassis life is. I thought being stainless steel, it's free. Well, <laughs> it'd be worth quite a bit in the junkyard, wouldn't it? <laughs> we might get more for the truck at the junkyard. See how much the whole thing weighs. Wouldn't be afraid to. Of course, the engine and tires on it are good, you know, so they may be willing to pay, you know, pretty good money for it, but it won't be anything to make your eyes pop open, so. <laughs> but anyway, that was that's on there as soon as I get an appraisal for that. In fact, right now, I'd like a motion that we declare this fire department tanker truck uh, as surplus property. 
Our first. Okay. Is there a second? Uh, second over there. Any discussion to it? He showed me pictures of it, and it's just it's there's not safe for us to take it out on the road. All right. All in favor of declaring a surplus property? Okay. I have notified you then of its. And then on the back page was the the uh, Iron Mountain property that we just agreed to sell. I just have to show you have that presented to you as part of the state law. Um, you've got a copy of the uh, new revised your duty under the law and uh, managing government records. It's just keep you informed of what the regulations are as a public servant regarding any kind of records or anything like that. It's the same thing that you had before. There's just two amendments to it that came out of this last legislative session. One of them is that somebody can request public records now by email where they couldn't before. And then there's the I can't remember what the second thing. You remember what the second okay. amendment was? Anyway, is a minor thing too, but we have to give it to you as part of the attorney general's directive. So, um, I had texted each one of you about the possibility of serving on the Bill and Roll Foundation. They would like to have a representative from Hartford to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I ain't said nothing. <laughs> We'd like to have a representative from Hartford. I had gone to a meeting, but I have had to miss two of their meetings for various reasons, and so I'm looking for somebody out of Hartford to be a representative on that foundation to just give Hartford some input, you know, have some Harvard input into it, but they just want representation from everything, from from the cities, from the various organizations. And so, if you're not willing to try to find somebody that, just tell me later. <laughs> tell me somebody. Where did they meet? And what is this all? About? They meet out at Jerusalem Ridge, and they meet the third Thursday of every month. Uh, they're bringing back the festival. Uh, Saturday is going to be a work day at the Jerusalem Bridge, just cleaning up. Um, they've got something like 20 bands this time that are going to be there over a three-day uh, weekend. And this is something that is great for High County. The last time that they, well, they had it last year, but it's been about six or eight years since they had the last one. The last time they had it, there was uh, there was representation from 25 states and two foreign countries of people who came to a high county. Of course, that was money that went into a high county right. that helped economically, and so it you know it can be a big boost for us uh, for a high county. If we had a restaurant or a hotel or something like that, <laughs> we could greatly benefit from it. So. Um, you know, we we need to have some kind of participation out of Hartford. So if you know somebody and you're not willing to do it, at least uh, doesn't mean you have to like bluegrass music. Mary Bell can dance to it. I'm going to be a in. I like bluegrass music. I know you I don't mean I'm going to sit on the board chair. I you like music and she talks, so she ought to be. Okay. That'd just be one more night in a month that you don't have to look at what you're going to do. <laughs> uh, one thing that, uh, the next thing that I have is that uh, I had a meeting today with a representative from the Kentucky League of Cities uh, as far as uh, they're into community development. And... Uh, they brought up a suggestion, which I think is uh, extremely positive, that perhaps we need to have a strategic plan for Hartford and not just be reactive, but be more proactive in our approach to uh, economics and approach to uh, just living conditions or trying to get industry in here, whatever. 
So uh, they have a plan. They would what they would do is come down and try to conduct a meeting for any and all citizens of Hartford and try to get input. You know, uh, what's our what's our positives? What's our negatives? What uh, opportunities do we have? Uh, what do we need to work on? It's just try to put together a strategic plan for five years, ten years down the road. And I think that's something that uh, we ought to take a serious look at and try. They, they charge about, she said about $1,000. They may come off of it a little bit to do that. Uh, if they came in and did a full-blown study and made hard recommendations and all this, it'd be like $15,000. I don't think we can afford that right now. Can't but they take part of our comprehensive plan that we're getting worked on now? That would be that would something be that, that, you know, could uh, help even uh, the comprehensive plan to be developed the yeah. way it needs to be developed. Yeah. And so, but anyway, I want us to think about that and try to, I, she's going to um, stay in touch with me and try to I think it's an excellent idea. see how we feel about it. Uh, I think just to have uh, just a community-wide meeting and just let people uh, bring their ideas to the table, you know, not just depend upon us to come up with a, right. a, or, you know, so I think that would be one of the... Well, when you go to write a strategic plan, you need to have somebody that knows how yeah. to write it. Well, she gave me a, she gave me a half dozen different uh, plans of different cities and I'll be glad for each one of you to take one home with you and when you get through reading it just bring it back up here we can kind of pass them around that way but uh, you know just like the town of Bartle down way down the western part of the state uh, it's a little small town they looked around what is it that we can offer to people and basically they've, they've got a cypress swamp next to the and they said this is something we need to try to utilize, you know, to get people in here and take swamp tours or, you know, uh, if you have a restaurant, have swamp burgers and swamp slaw. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but, you know, it's just try to just brainstorm and try to come up with ideas. But sit down and just accept people's ideas about, uh, you know, what are the opportunities that we got? What are our assets? What do we need? You know, and things like that. So, if you're interested in it, I'll go ahead and pursue that a little farther and try to make our council a little more proactive in its approach to. Well, I think it would be great to work with the economic development. I mean, you know, and most of the stuff we're doing on that. Yeah. Because we need some guidance. Yeah. And that's, you know. I don't think you could do anything but get, you know, if you only got one tidbit out of it, yeah, it's a step in the right direction. Right. And that's more we've got right now. Okay. Uh, anybody have anything that you want to bring up tonight? Any kind of issues or? Well, what about uh, moving the city limits out to 231? I've had some people ask about that. Well, before you annex property, you have to give the people that you're going to annex a chance to say yes or no. Yeah. So there would have to be, they would have to agree that they wanted to be annexed. Yeah, well, they asked me, they said, well, what, what do we get out of it, you know? Well, their, their th thing would be they get to pay city taxes. Yeah, I told them that. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't go 24-hour police They get to vote city yeah, elections. Yeah, 24-hour police patrol. <laughs> yeah, they get, they get to vote in city elections, you know. Uh, they get in liquor. What the benefits want? would be that uh, the water and sewer service. Well, they're on county be, water now. Do I? They're on county water. Right. Uh, it not, wouldn't be too difficult to swap them over to city water. But, the police uh, department goes out to have them. That's the thing, is whenever people you know, are being asked if they want to be annexed, they say, what's in it for me? Yeah. And for, for a lot of people, 
being able to vote in city elections or uh, have police patrols or things like that is not enough of an incentive to overcome the increased taxes. Now, one of the things that uh, I aim to remedy that we haven't, you know, we've lowered our taxes here in Hartford by 20 percent. And uh, unfortunately, the newspaper doesn't cover it, but you all, you all do. And, you know, uh, unfortunately, everybody doesn't subscribe to your all's. Um, but what I have to do is make the editor of the paper aware that, hey, we've lowered taxes here, which is unheard of for a town. You know, and we're taking a bite in our income to try to improve the possibility of businesses coming and make it a little more conducive to economic development. And so, anyway, I need to contact her after next week. So, anybody else have anything that you want to bring up? What about this uh, parkway entrance and exits out there? Do you heard anything on that? Uh, not really. I mean, we we got some people working on trying to find businesses, things like that. Uh, I really can't say much more than that about it, you know, because uh, some of it's just speculating and uh, I just had to let it go with that. Uh, have you heard where uh, I heard, I don't know who told me now, the city of Beaverdam is wanting to build one room buildings out at the park and for people to stay in when they're here for their music. The thing. county is considering that. I thought the city of Beaverdam was going to build it. That's what I heard. It's county, county property, property out there. Yeah, it's county property out there. Has Beaverdam said they would? Oh, I mean, they're yeah, building so something in Beaverdam, but they're going to, I heard that they want to build so something in the county park. They talked about the park. I heard that walker. On the radio, I guess. I don't know where. They have a couple out in the park. Or at least one that I know of. Huh? They have one out in the park right now. Do they? They have one out in the park. Cap park, yeah. Yeah. Where have we got no Cowper and people don't move that on one uh, Cowper side of the house? Right up there it's behind you? Street. No. Behind you? Well, they was already there. Oh, really? The, this one's over by the maintenance shop. Stuff and they, so well, I thought they looked into that and the questions that people and it was to they were just uh, until they weren't anybody wasn't supposed to be staying in it. I mean, we'll have Nancy look into it, you know. But, I think but, you need some help with that. You know, we're on Walker Street, yeah, you know, that one was threatened her and everything. Yeah, yeah. she uh, said, that. yeah, yeah, she said that, that. that fellow's not quite. Right. right, but he's got some mental issues, I think. Well, that covers a whole lot of art for there. Right there, behind it. We've not, right. we've not quit looking at our options there. I'll just say that. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll have to yes. get Nancy to look into that. Okay. You might say something to her. I leave uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, I'll be gone for a week. I'm going to uh, Ecuador on a mission trip. So we go party hardy while you gone, man. They bring in a load of sand and <laughs> have a beach party in here. So. <laughs> Fortunately, they clean Every it up before I get back. We we're going to tell them George said we could. Yeah, they clean <laughs> it up before I get back. So. You didn't sell the invoice, did you? No. <laughs> As long as you pay for it out of your pocket, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing else I understand. Motion we adjourn. Motion second. Take the pick. Oh, All in favor of 50 to 10. All right. Motion. Meetings adjourned.